In 2013, Atul Gawande wrote a piece for The New Yorker about slow ideas. These are ideas that, despite mounds of evidence and research, fail to take off. Gawande tells the story of the inception of anesthesia and antiseptics. Both were seen as promising new ideas in the mid-1860s, but only one of these groundbreaking developments took off. It was anesthesia. Anesthesia addressed an immediate issue, pain during surgery. Antiseptics, however, addressed an invisible problem, germs. Antiseptics were not adopted until a generation later. Slow ideas have always been with us. Climate change. Too much sugar is bad for you. Think about how long it took to convince people that seat belts save lives. As a teacher, I'm here today to talk to you about another long-simmering slow idea. Structure phonics is the most effective way to teach children how to read. Phonics is connecting the sounds from our oral language to the letters or groups of letters that represent those sounds in an alphabetic writing system. Human beings learn to speak in the early years of life. Babies develop speech as they hear it from their caregivers. Speaking is intuitive to humans. We have been speaking for so long that our brains have evolved a language center. We are hardwired for speech, which means that given adequate exposure to oral language, we will become proficient in its use, no instruction required. However, we are not hardwired to read. Our brains need explicit instruction that literally rewires it creating connections that would not otherwise exist. In public schools today, we teach reading as if it is as natural as speaking. We teach reading as if it is a skill to absorb, not a skill to be explicitly taught. Currently, we teach children letter sounds, sight words to memorize, and encourage them to use context, such as pictures, to decipher words. This method is known as balanced literacy and it has been the most commonly used method to teach reading since the 1980s. Essentially, children are presented with some knowledge and then are left to create meaning from that knowledge. Let me give you an example. When I taught kindergarten, I would give my students small books called leveled readers. Within the pages of these books were words that corresponded with pictures on the page. As we would get ready to read, as the teacher, I would use a series of cues or prompts to guide my students. So if the sentence was, I have a pet cat, I would remind my students that they knew the words I and have as sight words. I would then maybe encourage them to get their mouth ready to say the p in pet. I would then usually point to the picture of the cat to draw their attention to that. With enough cues, the students would recite the words. The next year, I jumped up to fourth grade where it became quickly apparent that many of my students did not have any strategies for sounding out longer words. The pictures were gone, and the pictures were gone, and the guessing strategies no longer worked because the text was too complex. As a teacher, I should have known how to help them, but I didn't know because I had never been taught. That feeling of frustration led me down the road to structured phonics. Structured phonics involves teaching all letter sounds, how those sounds work together, and how to break those sounds apart. This is probably the point in the talk where you are wondering, this all sounds familiar. Are you sure we don't teach phonics in schools? Well, like everything in education, it's a little bit more complicated than it should be. Yes, all schools teach phonics, but most schools do not teach a structured and systematic phonics curriculum. Throughout the 80s and 90s, reading scores began to fall so much that Congress convened a national reading panel to look at all of the reading research up until that point. The evidence was clear. Structured phonics was the most effective way to teach children how to read. It led to the greatest gains in reading accuracy for children. Study after study shows that phonics in the early grades works. And yet, we are still teaching children to read with the balanced literacy method. Reading scores have barely budged in 30 years, and people of color and low-income people have suffered the most. In 2019, the National Assessment for Educational Progress revealed data that showed that only 37% of American 12th graders were reading proficiently. Only 15% of black 12th graders were reading proficiently. 
Now this is news to you, but this is not news in education circles. The data has looked like this for the past 30 years. So this begs the question, why do we ignore this data? Do we really believe that people have a civil right to read? Now we often only talk about children when we talk about reading research, but those children become adults. Today's struggling reader is tomorrow's partially illiterate adult. Illiterate is a very strong word, one often reserved for developing nations, but illiteracy is alive and well here in the United States. Only 48% of adults are reading at a level that allows them to identify and interpret information that is lengthy and complicated. And 14% of adults cannot read well enough to fill out a job application. Reading poorly as an adult means that going to vocational school or college or entering the workforce will be exponentially more difficult. And the ramifications extend far beyond employment. How does a person with such low skills understand a health diagnosis and participate in their own health care? How does that person read their own mail or a rental agreement? How does that person read a ballot initiative? That individual's pain has and will continue to become our collective pain. Because when an adult does not read well, it impacts their economy, the public health, and our democracy. Phonics advocates have been sounding the alarm for years, but changing the way we teach reading is a very slow idea. So let's take a look at what it would take to switch from a balanced literacy method to a structured phonics method. Number one train education professors in the science of reading. Number two, at schools of education need to train teachers in training. And number three, school districts will need to adopt and purchase new curriculum and train existing teachers accordingly. Practically everyone involved would need to abandon their old ways. And for many, balanced literacy is the only theory and method that they know. We would put in a lot of difficult and expensive work for an eventual reward. Now some states are well on this path due to legislation that has essentially forced a change. However, we know with other social and cultural movements, the legislation is only a part. For an issue to be successful, you must have buy-in. You must talk about it and give the idea a lot of oxy oxygen. And the good news is that this is happening. Teachers across the country are talking about the need for phonics. Once hushed conversations are now out in the open. Parent advocacy groups have sprung up across the nation, and legislation has passed in multiple states that is bringing evidence-based teaching back to the classroom. The idea is picking up speed. So where do we go from here? Well, it's important to note that phonics will not solve all reading comprehension issues. It's important to note that phonics will not solve all reading comprehension issues. Poverty, trauma, vocabulary instruction, and content knowledge all play a role. But shouldn't we start somewhere? Instructional methods are something that schools can actually control. In 2015, the state of Mississippi decided to get serious about raising reading scores. Legislation allocated money for all elementary teachers to be retrained in the science of reading and phonics instruction. Guess which state was the only state to make reading gains in 2019? How can we make phonics a nationwide movement and not a piecemeal state-by-state -state intervention? Well, I am a firm believer that we can do this through education, legislation, and old-fashioned grassroots organizing. We have to keep talking about this issue and we need to keep asking the question, why do we ignore the data? Why are we okay with poor reading scores? If you feel inspired today to see this idea come to light, go talk to someone, your child's teacher, a school district administrator, the director of a school of education. Because we can no longer sit back and rely on adult literacy programs and prison volunteers to teach our fellow human beings how to read. At the end of the day, this is not about teaching children. This is about teaching future adults. Yes, children need to read in order to learn, but adults need to read in order to live, to participate in society, to be a citizen. So help us move this slow idea along because school years come to an end, our students move on and typically we have no idea what happens to them. All we have is the data. 
And we can turn that data around because we know what works. The research is abundant and clear. Phonics is an idea worth spreading. Thank you. <laughs>